Hi everyone, welcome back to our English news program as a news and here are some of the latest news for you. Istima President of Republic Zera Muzorta appoints the new government cabinet. The ninth cabinet of the new Timor Leste's government was sworn in by the president of Timor Leste, Jose Ramos Horta, at the presidential palace on Saturday, 1st of July 2023. At the opening of his speech during the inauguration ceremony, Horta stresses that the government's role is to serve the people honestly and responsibly in order to build this country. The function, the obligation of the members of parliament, members of government, advisors, civil servants is to serve the people. And how will you serve? Implementing with celerity, with speed, with wisdom, with competence, honesty, the program approved by the national parliament. At the same time, Horta also thanked the previous government, which was led by Torbatan Ruak, that faces complex situations such as the COVID pandemic, floods, and climate change. In his speech, Horta also recommended that the new government can prioritize Timor Leste accession to ASEAN. The ninth government consists of 46 members of ministries, deputies ministries, as well as the secretaries of state, where mainly comprises from the alliance of the winning parties CNRT with the Democratic Party. The new ninth government will be led by Prime Minister Karara Shanan Guzman for five years of period, which is 2023 until 2028. The ceremony was attended by special guests from ASEAN member states' representative, officials from Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, and representatives from various countries, as well as former Timorese government officials and the public. Shannon Guzman swore in as Timor Leste's new prime minister for 2023 to 2028. Shanana Guzman has been sworn in as the new Prime Minister of Timor Leste for 2023 until 2028 period. During his speech, Guzman asks his newly formed government to serve the people with responsibility. Today, I am standing back in front of the people of Timor Leste and to take forward my responsibility as the process of developing the country. Today, we took our oath wholeheartedly in regards of our responsibility, and when it comes to the time we realize that we are incapable or unable to perform our mission properly, we are willing to withdraw ourselves from our post that given to us today. This newly formed ninth government cabinet has it promised to obey the vision and mission for country's development. On behalf of the new ninth government cabinet, we are going to rule with responsibility, and I request all the members of this newly formed cabinet to serve enthusiastically and loyal to your duty. Guzman also committed that, during his mandate, he will create plan, action and management in different way with total responsibility. Shanano Guzman was Timor Leste's Prime Minister in 2012 until 2017 and again he returned to late government in 2017 until 2019. And in 2023 the Timorese have given trust to Shanano Guzman to become Prime Minister for five years. He was the President of Timor Leste back in 2002 until 2007. The CNRT party led by Shannon Guzman won the 2023 parliamentary election, which took place on May 21, 2023. The Federal Republic of Germany is ready to welcome Timorese workers. The Timorese President of Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, and his delegation met with Frank Walter Steinmeier, the President of the Federal Republic of Germany, at the Presidential Palace in Berlin on June 26, 2023. Both Horta and Steinmeier discussed the establishment of cooperation between the two countries, especially in sending Timorese workers to work in Germany with a national passport, and also to provide professional technical training to young Timorese in Timor-Leste. Horsa said the meeting shows a positive result since the Germany head of state willing to accept workers from Timor-Leste in order to work in Germany, but there are still more discussions required to establish future agreement. One thing that I have asked them to provide the professional technical training to young Timorese people. It's fine for Timorese workers to come and work in Germany. They are willing to accept. But the discussion are continuing in various ministries, foreign ministry, the interior ministry, as well as the private sector in Germany, as they are going to do the recruitment, and I believe this can be happened. During his visit, Horta have also met and asked some of the Germany's member of the parliament to support the professional technical schools in Timor-Leste, especially the technical school in Fatumaka-Bokau municipality, 
by providing the modern and advanced devices and can be based on the developed and industrialized country's curriculum. The focus in the specific areas which the Timorese workers will be working in Germany such as factories, agriculture and others. Namazorta asked the German government to provide training to Timorese employees related to Timor-Leste's accession to ASEAN. During his one-day visit to the Federal Republic of Germany, Ramos Orta met with Frank Walter Steinmeier, the President of the Federal Republic of Germany, as well as Olaf Scholz, the Germany Chancellor, and discussed about the cooperation of both governments that will be established in the future. At a similar chance, Horta asked the German government to offer training to Timorese employees and the ministerial officials in various areas that can assist Timor-Leste joining the ASEAN sooner. I asked for support and provide training to employees, ministerial technical officials for the development of skills in order to join the ASEAN. The German government committed to support Timor-Leste in various areas, such as English training, technical and public service. Horst also continues to remind the newly formed government cabinet to prioritize the importance progress of foreign cooperation, which is the previous government have established. Cambodia's parliament unanimously approved a law amendment that mandates citizens to participate in voting and discourages them from boycotting the upcoming election. Well, the new law is going to penalize people who do not uh, exercise their right to vote in uh, Cambodia. So if you don't vote uh, in, in an election, uh, you will basically be barred from uh, running for uh, office. Um, and then the second part of it is that you're not going to be allowed to boycott election or call for a boycott. You know, it really shows that this is a dictatorship uh, that is playing a democracy game, that there isn't really any real democracy uh, on offer here in these coming elections or, in, in fact, in the daily life in Cambodia, and that civil and political liberties have been completely and totally restricted uh, by Prime Minister Hun Sen and his government. The law is aimed at bearing those who do not cast votes from becoming candidates in the future elections, the latest move by the country's longest-serving Prime Minister Hun Sen to stifle dissent. The election commission last week said anyone urging people not to vote will be fined or imprisoned. The state media MRTV reported Myanmar torched $179.5 million worth of seized illegal drugs and conducted a ceremony in Yangon to mark World Drug Day. According to MRTV, the destroyed drugs were seized across the country till May this year, but not specific data was provided for the list of drugs or the location at which they were seized. United Nations' latest report said opium cultivation in military-ruled Myanmar jumped 33% last year, reversing a six-year downward trend in the strife-torn country. The United Nations said the growth was directly connected to the political and economic turmoil in Myanmar since the military took power in a coup throwing out the elected government led by Aung San Suu Kyi two years ago. Philippine authorities rescued over 2,700 alleged human trafficking victims after raiding a commercial building in a Manila suburb as they were attempted to crack down on a cybercrime syndicate. Police were seen entering the compound with police vehicles parked outside the building as they continued investigations. Those rescued, police told local media, include people from Philippines, China, Indonesia and other countries and that they were swindled into working for fraudulent gaming sites and carrying out scamming activities. Reported by local media, police are still determining if workers are part of a syndicate or victims of human trafficking. Police told local media foreign nationals who were deemed victims will be repatriated to their home countries. In May 2023, leaders of the ASEAN expressed their concerns over the growing number of human trafficking incidents in the region where workers are coerced to commit online fraud.
The Philippine government has called on the public to start conserving water to prepare for the impending El Nino phenomenon as the country has been experiencing water shortages for years due to lack of infrastructure and it could get worse with possible dry spells. Water interruptions are common occurrence, especially during summer. My Arpon, a resident in Manila, said the water pressure in her house is weak and that is why she still needs to fetch water. We need to store up water, but it's still not enough. So sometimes we don't take a bath. We just wipe with a wet towel or spray water to freshen up because the weather is so warm during summer. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Service Administration said that the water level in four dams in the country were low. Water concession holders had no choice but to cut back or ration the water supply. We have a good elevation and we are above the reservoir rural curve, which is almost 5 meters. So I can say that we will not reach a water level that's too low. We have a good elevation and we are above reservoir rural curve, which is almost 5 meters. So I can say that we will not reach a water level that's too low. The National Water Resource Board warns that the country's water woes will get worse with the onset of the El Nino phenomenon. Aside from possible water interruptions in households, the agriculture sector will be affected because of the lack of irrigation. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. have directed all government agencies to strictly implement water conservation measures. The United Nations World Meteorological Organization says El Nino will lead to a new spike in global heating and increase the chance of breaking temperature records. Thousands attended Pink Dot in Singapore, the first such LGBT rights rally in the conservative city-state after the repeal of a ban on gay sex last November. Some participants at the rally said there had been a general softening in attitudes towards the queer community following the repeal. I personally think from their perspective, from the older generation, because they have been so used to following what the government wants them to do. So now that the government say, hey, we are going to, we have already repealed, um, then they have a lot of question mark that they feel like they need, uh, they need answer to. It makes it a lot easier for me now that it has come from the government and it makes, a lot, it makes it a lot more easier for me to explain to them, oh, because such is such, so and so, love is love, you know? Until recently, homosexuality was illegal in Singapore under a colonial era law known as Section 377A. Last year, last year's Pink Dot was about repealing 377A, and at the end of the year, that happened. So I feel like um, Pink Dot has always had, have had a correct focus. But I think what more of, like queer people in Singapore would like would really just be for everyone to be a lot more accepting, a lot for everyone to be a little bit more open-minded. If I'm being very honest, the repeal of 377A, it doesn't really change much because there were other legislation that were put in place to still prevent queer people from being able to live the same way that straight people do, that cisgender people do. So it's mostly a public perception thing and I don't think it's really changed the public perception of drag queens in Singapore. Lesbian activists Kali Chia and Chin Chia recently announced on Instagram they were having a baby. Ching said side seemed ready to accept their family. Activists say the entrenched definitions of marriage as between a man and woman and of family as mother, father and children mean LGBT families suffer under public policies in areas such as housing. Many Muslims across Indonesia mark the Idul Adha festival with prayers and animal sacrifice even as a large Muslim organization declared the Islamic holiday to have begun a day earlier. According to the local media, while the Indonesian government decided that Idul Adha will fall Muhammadiyah, one of the biggest Muslim organizations in Indonesia. Devotees flock to mosques early morning to offer prayers before performing ritual animal slaughters and share the meat with the poor. Idol Adha, known as the Festival of Sacrifice, is one of the main holidays in the Islamic calendar. <laughs> 